Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. So in this tutorial, I would like to introduce to you an example that for which we would like to practice the duct sizing and how we can uh, create the duct work for a, a small one-story building. So if you if you can look, I have created one this example on uh, one-story building and I have created the equipment, uh, which is a rooftop unit, and also the main dock fork uh, running across the hallway or the corridor. There are eight uh, offices in this, um, you know, in this example where you can see different offices. And also I have started uh, the whole dock fork from scratch, created the distribution dock fork in the room. I created all the uh, diffuser, supply air diffusers, and also the return of this uh, system would be from above the ceiling plenum so I have uh, created a return above the ceiling plenum um, I haven't added the return grill in the rooms yet but um, the purpose of um, the tutorial would be mostly on the actual dot sizing and how you can assess your dot size and if you remember in the previous tutorial we talked about the McQuay dot sizer system uh, can bring it up here to your attention. If you remember, we downloaded this um, design tool for the dock sizing and I indicated that how easy this would be to be used for you to um, you know, size your dock for based on an acceptable um, air velocity and also the pressure head loss across your dock fork at various sizes. Uh, so just to go into this example, I go to 3D model of this um, and I can show you the 3D model that I have just quickly created. So having a look at this uh, system, as you can see, there is a there's a rooftop unit on the roof here, and we have the main dock work running across the hallway. I'm just going to rotate this to the other side. Consistent color, and in the consistent color, as you can see, there is a rooftop unit. This is a uh, rooftop unit uh, from Linux uh, manufacturer. I downloaded the Revit model from their website and also I created the dock work and I have sized this dock work uh, which we will discuss in the next tutorial. In this tutorial I just wanted to go over what this um, practice would look like and um, just going into the elevation of this building and as you can see on the elevation we have only one story building here. Um, the height of this building is about uh, 3,000 millimeter or 3 meter. And then we have a flat roof where we put the rooftop unit on top. As you can see, we have a return right underneath the ceiling plenum. And we have the supply duct uh, coming and connects to the dock fork. So showing you some of the uh, calculations, let me just give you the outline of what we are looking for. So this is a 8,310 square feet single story office building. There are eight offices here. And for the general offices, if you remember from the previous tutorials that we had a rule of thumb calculation. For this calculation, I want to draw your attention that I didn't do a very precise heating and cooling load calculation. Uh, I just estimated the air supply rate for different offices based on a rule of thumb calculation just for the exercise of the duct sizing. So you can go back to the rule of thumb calculation of the, uh, you know, uh, for the heating and cooling um, tutorial. There's a video in our video database you can refer to and, and see how I can, I can approximate this. So, uh, based on the approximation, if you remember from other tutorial for general offices, we could say that between 300 uh, square feet to 350 square feet, you can consider one ton of cooling uh, required. So, based on that analogy, I have considered that uh, based on this 8,310 square feet, I can have um, dividing by 350, I can, I might need approximately 24 ton of cooling for this whole building. And as you know, 
cooling require more air to be served to the building. So for calculating your maximum air supply required for a building, you have to focus on the cooling load of a building. And now assuming that for every ton of cooling, you need at least in an approximate 400 CFM per ton of cooling, then for 24 ton of cooling, I can conclude that I would need approximately 9,600 CFM on air. And based on that, I come up with a equipment that has about 10,560 CFM capacity. So I, I sized my ducts based on 995 feet per minute air velocity on the main duct. And for the return, I considered lower velocity. So um, I, based on this velocity and using the calculation tools that I just showed you from the previous tutorial, this calculation sheet, based on uh, the CFM on top here. And let's let's give it a try here, 10,560. Uh, and then on the dock sizing, I used um, 66 inch by 26 inch. And as you can see, our fluid velocity or air velocity is in the range of 995, which I have it here. So as you can see that it matches. And for the return, I have the same return error, but for the um, return, I've been using 44 by 44 inch, which has a larger um, air dot cross section for the return error. So I can anticipate lower velocity, which is 830, almost 837 feet per minute, as you can see here. And uh, consequently, I would see less head loss on my return dock, which is 0 0.017 in uh, inch of water column per 100 feet of water column. So as you can see, I have multiple offices here. I have the area of each office. Then um, given that um, same analogy, I can calculate the cooling tonnage per office that I would need. It's basically um, you divide this by 350 and then you get the cooling tonnage. And when you have the cooling tonnage, you multiply that by 400 you get your air supply per room. And then based on air supply per every room that I have, I come up with a total of 9,496 CFM air required in all of these different rooms. So remember that this is a rule of thumb calculation. I haven't taken into account the heat exchange um, effect in terms of the building uh, envelope, R values, and also the, um, you know, orientation of the building, the effect of sun. I have ignored all of those and just came up with this number based on the rule of thumb calculation just for the purpose of duct sizing. And then based on this, I have sized my branch ducts going into every offices. So if you look at here, duct size, diameter. Uh, so these sizes are all are based on the diameter. I have, I have used the circular duct getting into every office. Um, so I have sized them based on this velocity. So at 18 inch, for example, for supplying 811 CFM, your uh, duct, uh, your air velocity would sit at 459 in that range, which is a good good air, air velocity. In the new next tutorial, we'll talk about how we have to uh, size the duct based on certain air velocity because we need to remain within the constraint air velocity to respect the noise requirement um, of the air within the dock work and also the um, the built up of the static pressure in the dock, which are, which are all our concerns. So, so this this dock sizes all are coming from our calculation from this software that we discussed briefly in the last tutorial. For example, for the first room, if I put 811 CFM for the office one and I instead of using the um, rectangular dock I go and check mark the equivalent diameter which is specific to round dock system and I put 18 as the diameter of my dock fork as you can see here now you can see the fluid velocity or my air velocity in the dock which is at the range of almost 459 feet per minute which is an acceptable range so that's what we continue with all of the offices and check the velocity, check the pressure drop across that dock fork. And then we 
we model our system. So going back to my top doc, just let you know that when I when I uh, did the analysis and the modeling of this uh, this office space, I used the metric unit. So uh, please consider that these these numbers are based on metric, uh, as opposed to what I showed you on the on the actual tables. These are all uh, in form of imperial uh, unit, but what you see on the actual modeling is based on a metric unit, which is if you if you convert 450 is the same as 18 inch of the dock size as you can see i have sized my dock fork for the main branch and i have sized for my dock fork for the branches getting into office and then eventually as it gets to my uh, diffuser air supply diffuser so in the next tutorial we're going to discuss about this uh, example a lot more if you like this kind of tutorial please uh, subscribe in this channel and press on the notification button. If you like this kind of uh, tutorial, please light up the like button. And if you would like to have access to this modeling for your practice, please send me direct email at the word of building design as a one word at gmail.com. I would send you this uh, model for you to start practicing and, and use the tutorial. I can send you, um, you know, the model in Revit format plus the um, the word format that uh, I just showed you here for the condition of this practice. Thank you very much for watching this video uh, and um, I would see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.